What's up guys and welcome to another video and today I'm going to be talking about the top 11 footballers today. Like I'm not talking about my favorite, I'm not, there's going to be no bias to this. These are going to be the players that I believe are the best in their respective positions in the world at this moment in time. Now there's going to be a few honorable mentions here and as I go on I will kind of bring them up and a few of them actually I'm going to decide on the fly because there's a couple of them like in particular the goalkeeper which I'm about to talk about right now. Um, that I'm really just torn between because I feel like there's a lot of really, really good players and it's kind of hard to choose from. So let's go ahead and jump straight into the goalkeepers. And I, I'm i torn between Jan Oblak and, of course, Ter Stegen because I feel like both keepers do extremely well in certain things. Now, Ter Stegen, I think, actually takes the cake because maybe he's not quite as good as Oblak from a purely save, making saves point of view, but I would say he's basically at the same exact level. And the only difference between them is maybe that Ter Stegen is actually better with his feet. And I'm I'm not a big fan of keepers having to use their feet and be, you know, and be great passers and being basically playmakers from the back. I'm not a big fan of that whole kind of that whole idea that they have to be good at that. But one thing I will say is that in Barcelona's system, it's basically fundamental. So, for what he brings to the table for for Barcelona themselves, and overall as a keeper, I think he's actually better than Oblak despite maybe Oblak being from, a, from, I would say, the point of view of just purely making saves, he might be slightly better. And another thing is that Oblak plays for a far more defensive team. Uh, you know, for, of course, Atletico, for the most part, they play a very, very defensive system, a park-the-bus system, especially against the big teams under Diego Simeone. So you expect them to maybe have a, 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 a I don't know, maybe force teams to take worse shots. Um, whereas Ter Stegen maybe takes some, has to deal with a lot more because Barcelona is so offensive. So uh, it really just becomes him and Pique and Umtiti basically uh, and Langley having to deal with a lot of very, very bad scenarios. So I'm going to put uh, Ter Stegen as, in my opinion, the best goalkeeper in the world, but Oblak is right there. Moving on to the left back. And uh, like I said, no bias is going to be included in this. This is not going to be like, oh, fuck Liverpool. No, this is going to be completely honest. And I feel like the best left back in the world right now is 100% Robert, uh, Robertson. There's just, there's nobody better than him in the world right now. I, I guess some honorable mentions would be maybe Alaba, but he kind of lost his position to uh, to Alfonso Davis. Um, there's been a lot of excellent left backs over the years, like Alexandro, somebody who continues. He's he's having some problems, he's having a couple bad seasons, so I can't really put him in the conversation. But I think that from a potential point of view and this kind of, the kind of physicality he brings, he was definitely one of them. And Jordi Alba is a guy who's consistently been uh, excellent for the last few years, but I just think that right now, Robertson is definitely the best left back in the world, whether it's offensively or defensively, and I think that's kind of what differentiates him between uh, between Alex and Arnold, is, you know, Arnold is excellent offensively, but realistically, defensively, I don't think he's, I don't think he's anything that special, whereas Robertson, he can put in crosses, he can put in free kicks, and let me tell you, the guy can defend his ass off, he's a warrior too, so I just feel like Robertson is definitely 100% the best left back in the world. And the center back I'm putting right next to him is actually his Liverpool teammate, and I, I believe is probably the best defender in the world right now. It's Virgil van Dijk. And what I mean by that is, like, for me, the most important thing about a defender isn't his passing. It's about purely defending. And the reason I feel like van Dijk is so much better than pretty much everybody else in the world as a, just a pure defender is you look at what Liverpool was before him, and you look at what they've become after him. They were a team that were capable of scoring five or six goals in the game, but motherfucker, they would concede five or six too. So they would, they would. I think the first season they finished eighth under Jurgen Klopp, and they were getting better and better, but they just consistently would uh, would drop points because of stupid goals conceded, and they were making a lot of mistakes with Lovren, <laughs> Lovren of all people, man. Uh, it, so having a guy like Virgil Van Dijk has just completely changed them defensively. I'm not gonna say they're impossible to get past, but they're fucking hard. They're um, they've been they went undefeated for almost the entire Premier League season, only losing to Watford, which of course was a shock. But still, you know they still only lost one game so far. It remains to be seen what will actually happen, but they're definitely gonna win the league, no doubt about that. Like whether whether they actually win it or whether they cancel the league, we all know who won the league, and that's coming from a United fan. So I have no pleasure in saying that, but regardless, man, Liverpool they dominated the entire season. They deserve it 100%. Hats off to them. And Van Dijk, I think, is the biggest part of that. I mean, Salah, he scores a lot of goals. I think Mane is probably their best player offensively. Um, but I just feel like, you know, Vir Virgil Van Dijk is the player that has really changed them and has made them uh, what the team that they are right now. The other center back, 
is another guy that I feel is extremely, extremely important to his team, and that is Sergio Ramos. Uh, I feel like Sergio Ramos, he has shown time and time again throughout his career, whether it's with Spain, whether it's with Real Madrid, it doesn't matter. Whatever, well, Whoever he's playing with, he's always been decisive. And I always go back to the Champions League final against Atletico where he scored at the very last second. He scored that header, he sent an extra time, and Real Madrid just dominated extra time and won their first Champions League in however many years. So it was a very, very big moment, and he was, of course, the captain. He was the main guy for that. Cristiano Ronaldo, he had the huge celebration, but Sergio Ramos is the guy that that gave Real Madrid the chance for all that to happen. So Sergio Ramos, in my opinion, remains to this day the best, the best, um, the best example of a clutch player in world football. I mean, I'm talking about defenders. I'm not talking about, you know, like Messi and Ronaldo, they're just, they're, you know, they, they are who they are. They're the best in the world. Um, but I just feel like Ramos, he, you know, as a captain, as a leader, he has to be on this team. He has to be in this lineup 100%. As a right back, and this might be kind of surprising for you guys, and I'm going to be accused of, uh, of being a bit biased here, and I think that's completely fair. But like I said, I'm trying to keep my bias aside, and I'm going to put Aaron Juan Basaka as the number one right back in the world. And I'm going to explain to you guys why, okay? I was looking across Europe's biggest teams and kind of thinking about who the best players are. And I mean, like, who can you really come up with? Carvajal for Real Madrid, I wouldn't say he's particularly good. Um, at Bayern Munich, there's really nobody. At least there's there's Kimmich. I, uh, he's he's excellent. Like, let's, get, let's not get it twisted. Like, Kimmich is an excellent player. But he plays in a lot of different positions, whether it's a CDM sometimes. And I feel like... He's a bit more of a utility player. I'm talking about a pure pure right back. So Kimmich is definitely in my number one honorable mention. But then you think about like Juventus. They don't really have anybody. They have like De Chilio and Danilo, stuff like that. You can go with Kyle Walker or Cancelo. But I think that Cancelo defensively is horrible. Um, and Kyle Walker, he's not quite a right back anymore. He plays more like um, a center back now with under Pep Guardiola. So I don't know. I'm just going with a pure right back. And I think that Aaron Wambasaka, with what he's achieved already in his career and what he can do, I think he's definitely number one for me personally. And I'm, like I said, I might be wrong about that. I could be wrong about this entire team, but I just feel like it. And I think that one thing to keep in mind here, and this is something that really, that really uh, I liked a lot. Let's just put it this way, okay? So recently, Van Anholt, of course, he plays for Crystal Palace. He's a teammate with uh, Willy Zaha. Now, essentially, they were talking about the best right backs in the Premier League, and they were comparing the two best right backs by far in the league, which is Alexander Arnold and Juan Bissaka. And Van Anholt actually, actually came out and said, let me tell you, like, if you ask Zaha which right back he would rather play every single week between Alexander-Arnold and Wambasaka, it would 100% be Alexander-Arnold, which means, simply simply put, Arnold is very good offensively, but defensively, he, he's not that big of a threat, whereas Wambasaka, he's going to be on your ass at all times, he's not really going to allow you to do anything, his tackling is excellent. So I just feel like, you know, it has to be taken into consideration that, uh, you know, a teammate of one of the best wingers in the league, who plays on the left, believes that Wambasaka is a far more difficult opponent to play against. And, you know, like I was saying, like, I think, I feel like the two best right backs in the world are actually those two guys. So, a lot of respect to Arnold. I, I definitely think he's right there. And him and Kimmich are the other, are the only two guys I could say could definitely compete with him and, and take his spot. But, you know, Wambasaka is very young. And you could say that, like, his offensive abilities aren't quite on par, but I feel like, you know, he can step, he's definitely bombing forward constantly, his crossing needs to be worked on, but I just think that overall, what, for me personally, my biggest thing for defenders, whether it's a fucking center back or a, or a wing, or a fullback, is defending, and Wambasaka and Robertson are both extremely good defensively, so, moving forward to the midfield now, all right, so, interesting choices for me personally, because I feel like Casemiro has to be mentioned, I feel like, um, there's a lot of there's a lot of really really tough choices to be made here because there's some really really good players like Busquets for example he's a guy I don't really like but he's definitely excellent um, you know a lot of the city players of course have to be mentioned David Silva Fernandinho guys like that um, Real Madrid players of course there's there's Kroos there's Modric there's a lot of excellent players right there that, that I've mentioned but I'm gonna talk to you guys about the guys I feel like right now are actually the very best and. Tony Kroos, as I mentioned, has to be in this team, 100%. I just, I just don't really see how you can not put him in there. And I was trying to decide between Tony Kroos and De Jong, of course, for Barcelona, because I just feel like De Jong, on his day, he might be the best just box-to-box midfielder in the world. He's very good defensively. 
he can definitely create a lot offensively. Of course, having played for Ajax, that excellent Ajax team that almost, uh, almost, you know, that that almost got to the final, got knocked out by Tottenham in the semifinal. I just feel like De Jong is an excellent player, and one day he might just be one of, if not the best midfielder in the world. But I just feel like right now Tony Kroos is still at a slightly higher level, and I actually just kind of changed that on the fly because I, I can't leave out Tony Kroos. I have, to, I feel, I think, I feel like he's he's just that damn good because. He brings a certain balance to Real Madrid that has really been important to them over the years and continues to be important to them. And I feel like they're going through a bit of a rough patch right now, but I don't really think that he's one of the players that has been going through a rough patch. I think that he's still at a very, very high level. And while De Jong is pretty close to him, I would definitely say that Toni Kroos has to be in there. And I just, I can't really feel comfortable leaving him out. Now, going into the other... CDM slash CM, because I feel like, you know, neither Kroos nor De Jong would be a CDM. They're more of a CM. Um, the CDM I'm going to put in this team, because I'm going to be playing a 4-3, is actually a tough one to pick. between Because for me, it's between Casemiro, who I already mentioned, and N'Golo Kante. And the reason I'm going to go with Kante is because I don't think I've ever seen a player be more, more important to uh, the success of a team. And let me put it this way. Ronaldo, he's going to score a shit ton of goals. All right, Messi's gonna score a ton of goals. All the you know all the best strikers in the world are gonna score a lot of goals. It's just there's no doubt about that. Whether it's Immobile, whether it's Lewandowski, whether it's Suarez, all these guys are gonna score a lot of goals. But never in my life have I seen, except for maybe Roy Keane, a CDM be as decisive and as important to a team as N'Golo Kante. And not 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 I'm not necessarily talking about Chelsea. I'm talking about what he did with Leicester, what he did with France. He was a very, very, very important player for France when they won the World Cup. He was the most important player alongside Jamie Vardy, in my opinion, in the the just amazing run Leicester had when they won the title. And when he went to Chelsea, he continued that with Antonio Conte. He was an amazing player. And to this day, I still believe that Conte is probably the best CDM in the world. That's why I have him in this team. I feel like he is number one in, term, in that position right there. Because Casemiro, he has the luxury of playing with amazing players. Motherfucking uh, Conte plays with Jorginho, a good player. He play, he's a good player. But, I mean, you know, he's not he's not, he's not Kroos, he's not Modric, he's not Isco, he's not playing around players like that. He's playing, he's playing around Jorginho, Kovacic, Mason Mount, who's a very good talent but still very young. So we're talking about a player that, in my opinion, continues to be extremely important and probably the most important player on his team, whether it's with France, he's one of the most important, and that's a France team that has Mbappe, Pogba, it has Griezmann, it has an amazing team, all right, and I just feel like Conte, from a CDM point of view, definitely the best player, uh, the best player out there, all right, so next up, we have Kevin De Bruyne, and I just feel like, as a Cam, there is no better Cam in the world than Kevin De Bruyne, I feel like he might just be the most influential player offensively in, in world football as of right now, except for, say, Leo Messi, or Cristiano Ronaldo, because I just feel like, his passing ability, and his actual finishing too is excellent, but his passing ability, he can find a pinpoint pass anywhere on the pitch, from any any direction, any angle, any run that's being made, he can find you, and he probably will find a way to find you. He can play long ball, he can play short, he's just one of those players that I just feel like, from a midfield point of view, any team in the world would be extremely lucky to have him. And like, being a United fan, I've had the displeasure of watching my team get completely dismantled by him time after time after time. And luckily, we've been getting the better out of City from a you know head-to-head -head results point of view as of late. But make no mistake about it, like Kevin De Bruyne is one of the best players in the world today and one that I have nothing but respect for. And I just feel like, you know, eventually he probably will go to Spain, go to Barcelona, or go to Real Madrid. And I think that he will win a Ballon d'Or. It's just, I think it's just a matter of time because I don't think, I, I even think he gets disrespected in some ways because I feel like a lot of people outside of England don't really understand just how good this player is and I just feel like one you know the potential here is unlimited essentially for him and eventually he will be at that level and he will be winning he will be winning uh, or at least being a very very solid competitor for a Ballon d'Or I feel like if you take him and Sergio Aguero out of that Man City team it's not even close to the same team. Like you can take out Sané, you can take out Mares, you can take out Bernardo Silva, you can take out David Silva, you can take out Fernandinho, you can take out pretty much anybody on that City team, and they won't have that big of an impact. Or you could, they're very much replaceable. But Kevin De Bruyne and Sergio Aguero, in my opinion, are the two players that if you take them out of that team, they're gonna struggle big time. Now, moving into the forwards, 
And two out of these three, I think, are going to be very, very straightforward. Talking about the left winger, I'm going to go with the one and only Cristiano Ronaldo, my favorite player of all time. And just somebody who I feel like has basically transcended the sport. And most importantly, despite his, his relatively high age, he continues to just kind of perform better and better. Of course, playing in Serie A, it's a very, very different league to La Liga. And I feel like this is very important because people kind of say like, oh, he's he's past his prime and all that stuff. And from an age point of view, he probably has. But realistically, we're talking about a guy who still has like a 28 you know, 29 year old's body. Like, I feel like he hasn't really had bad injuries for the most part. I mean, he's pretty much always been relatively, uh, relatively healthy. He's played injured a couple times, but he hasn't really destroyed his body. I would say he's probably the most disciplined, just athlete I've ever seen. So I don't really feel like he's actually at the end of his career. He's on the back nine for sure, but he hasn't reached the end of his career. And there's still so much he can do in my opinion. I think he's going after that 1000 goals that Pele scored. So I feel like he's going to try to get that. And whether he does that in remaining in Italy, which I don't think he will, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. I think he's definitely going to go after that. And he's a guy that can definitely achieve it. Now, Ronaldo, I put him as a left winger, despite him for the most part playing as a striker um, recently. It just kind of depends because like when he played for Real Madrid, him and Benzema would swap out a lot because Benzema, of course, is more of an assist player for Ronaldo as opposed to him being the actual goal scorer. And at Juventus, he, I think he plays a bit more of a striker uh, just because Juventus doesn't really have any good strikers. Like Higuain is way past his prime. He's pretty much garbage at this point. Um, Dybala is not a striker. So, you know, he's, he's their main guy up front, um, not playing on the wings and stuff like that, where they have, you know, guys like Cuadrado, Douglas Costa, they have Bernardeschi, they have, they have some really, really solid wingers, so I feel like regardless, Ronaldo as a left wing, it, it, it pretty much fits, because that's what he's, that's where he became great at, and I just feel like that's probably where he should be put in this team. Right winger, it has to be Leo Messi, there's nobody else, I mean, the only other person I could potentially put on this list is Mbappe, and I prefer Mbappe as a striker, first of all, but he definitely, uh, as a winger, I feel like he's probably actually better because, you know, on the wing, he can he can bomb forward, he can get into more space, um, whereas in a central position, there's more people around him. So I would definitely say that Mbappe is, right after Messi, the best right winger in the world, but Leo Messi is Leo Messi. When you talk about the best players of all time, and I will actually do a video about that, both Ronaldo and Messi are going to be in the top five. There's just no doubt about that. And 1A, 1B, you can kind of put them wherever you want, whether you have Pele, Maradona, uh, whether, you know, you, there's so many amazing players. And it's kind of... It's kind of hard because, of course, playing in different eras. But regardless, I don't think anybody's dumb enough to have Messi or Ronaldo outside of their top five. So they both have to be on there. We're not talking about just you know excellent talents right now. We're talking about guys that have been performing at this level for over 10 years. Cristiano Ronaldo won a Ballon d'Or in 2008. And look at him. He's still right there. Leo Messi won it the year after that. And he is still winning Ballon d'Ors constantly. So we're talking about two guys that have really transcended time and have just continued to reach a level of excellence that has never really been seen before. So I just feel like both of those guys have to be on there. And when it comes to the striker, this is where I think it kind of gets interesting because I was actually kind of having this conversation with my friend, with my man, Jopina. I bring him up a lot because, you know, we talk about a lot about football. Um, and we were kind of talking about like, who's the best striker in the world, Luis Suarez or Robert Lewandowski. For me, and I think he agrees as well, it's Robert Lewandowski, and I'm going to kind of break down, like, Suarez, like I said, and I, I do not like Suarez as a person, I, I actually pretty much despise him, but like I said, all bias are taken out of the conversation. I feel like Luis Suarez, the, the, the Suarez we saw at Liverpool, was probably the best striker I've seen since Wayne Rooney in his prime, or maybe even Fernando Torres in his prime, or, you know, we're talking about that kind of level, just pure striker. All right, we're talking about that good of a striker. He was a guy that was just insane. He was completely undefendable uh, that, that season with Liverpool when they almost won the league, but, oh, Steven Gerrard fucking slipped. So, you know, we're talking about an, an amazing footballer. But Robert Lewandowski, ever since his early days with Borussia Dortmund, has just continued to be... He's just continued to be at, an, at, a, at a level of excellence that is basically outmatched only... By Ronaldo and Messi from a goal scoring point of view because I just feel like as a pure goal scorer Lewandowski is exactly what you want he can score with both feet he can score with his head he's very intelligent his movement is perfect and he can actually be a really important part of the team because he can also you know his build-up play is excellent because you know he's very strong physically he's agile so he can pretty much do everything and he can do it at the highest level I feel like Lewandowski if he'd have played for a Real Madrid if he'd have played for a Barcelona he probably would have won a Ballon d'Or, or at least been right there. I mean, imagine 
the, the 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 attacking trident of Messi on the right, Neymar on the left, and Lewandowski up front. That would, in my opinion, beat you know the MSN or whatever it was called. Yeah, the MSN. In my opinion, that would be a better trident. Now it's hard to say that because of course we would never see it. Um, and Lewandowski right now is you know he's a bit older, but I just feel like I just feel like him and him and Suarez are one A one B for the best pure strikers in the world right now. And I think it has to be Robert Lewandowski. And some of that might be down to my personal bias. But I, like I said, I'm trying to keep that out of it. And I just think that Robert Lewandowski is 100% the best player, uh, the best striker in the world right now. So that's it for this video. I, go, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and let me know in the comments section down below your top 11. And I, if any of you guys do videos, I would love to see yours actually on a video. Um, yeah, hopefully you guys will uh, stick around for my next video. And I'll see you in the next one. That was a horrible outro, guys. See ya. Wow. I, I, I'm leaving it in, too. See ya, guys.